I'm standing right here on the historic De Anza Trail. Uh, this is where I will give a plein air demo. This is one of my favorite trees along the trail. Uh, we're in the historic uh, De Anza Trail along the central coast of California. This trail connects Nogales, Arizona to San Francisco, California. So come join me for a plein air paint out. The start to any uh, painting is to decide what your composition is going to be. So for this uh, painting of the tree, I've decided to work with the circle composition. There's a really beautiful circular shape that occurs with the movement of the branches. These branches move out, around, go up, and then out of the picture plane. So another branch comes in, down, around, out. It's connected to a larger branch. So what I'm doing now is just uh, putting in landmarks, sketching the general placement of things, where these branches will move in and out of the drawing. So the first step is just take a look at your scene. This is based on, I came to the scene earlier and did a series of sketches. And then based on those sketches, this is the approach I decided to take. Something about this beautiful California oak tree is the, just the twisting and turning of the branches. And that's my goal to capture this this twisting, turning movement. As you place in your key marks, you want to check your angles, the movement of things. Checking proportions, the thickness of some areas. So I'm just putting in these big marks, getting ready for the block in. As you're putting in your marks for this particular piece, I'm checking the positive and negative spaces that I see and thinking about how I'm going to work with those. How do those branches start within the tree and then move out? This is a wonderful time to just look into a shape study. These branches do not connect. We have some part of the path here. This tree is jutting out from the path. So at the bottom of my drawing, I'll indicate just that there's some grass down here. If 
you need to remove any lines or shapes, you can go in with your medium. I don't want these branches to connect here. So there's some nice movement here. Smaller branches meet out in the beyond area. But for now, I'm going to allow this, this nice circular movement to take place. Okay, so in here, make sure you're, you're paying attention to your composition and how do you want things to move within your composition. I have a branch coming off here, but I do need to resolve it. I can't just let it fall apart there before it goes to where it needs to go. So you can use darker lines to indicate uh, where you want emphasis. And you can use thinner lines where you might want to have things fall off. And of course, you could clean up your lines. You could get as detailed as you want or stay pretty loose. That is, that's up to the artist. Here again, I want to resolve what's going on. This, this goes up, but it doesn't connect to this set of branches. Have a nice twisting branch that goes off into the distance. This comes forward and then twists off. So I do not want these to connect. Keep in mind your branches are getting thinner as they go out into the distance, thicker as they come forward. Whenever you have branch and tree shapes, you have a wonderful pattern of light and shadow. So keep that in mind. Once again, you could wipe out anything that is unnecessary. You could even use your uh, paper towel or wiping cloth to help with your block in, which will go into the block in stage next. I'll resolve this branch, goes around, up and off. off and into the distance. Okay, step two is the block in stage. At this stage, we're looking at shadow shapes and I'm, I'm watching how the, you can use a large broad brush. Uh, this is a small eight by eight painting, so I may just go in with my sketching brush, but I'm just sketching in the shadow shapes, the sun puts a really nice, it's coming across this tree and putting a really nice shadow on the left side of the tree. And then it goes up along the branches. Some branches are in shadow and some are dappled with sun. So it's a wonderful uh, composition to really pay attention to. How is that, how are those shadows moving across the tree? For smaller paintings, I prefer to use my, this is just a small round sketching brush. I believe it's a number two. And I'm going to sketch in we have some grass area. Once again, I'm breaking everything down into value. This is this block in. We're looking at what is our dark, what are our darkest values? What are our midtone values? A lot of that is based on the angle of the sun. So when you set up your drawing, you do want to pay close attention to where the sun is in the sky and how it's moving branch catches, it has a nice shadow shape on it. And then this branch moves up, wraps around. Wonderful twist. Um, really important to go during the time of day where you can get these nice shadow shapes because these shadows will really help to define 
the value pattern on your drawing. Shadows really help to indicate the twisting, turning of the tree. Now this branch juts out from underneath an area of the tree that is hit by sun. So here again, shadow plays an important part of recognizing that twisting and turning of the branches. This front part of the, of the thick branch is in sunlight, so I can wipe that out. Those shadows are really going to help us to preserve the movement of the tree. Now some of these branches in the background, back here, they're all in shadow. And I will keep this shadow area in the background to a mid-tone. I don't want it to get too dark because we want to keep the mid-tone range, the background in mid-tone, middle range in mid-tone. We want our high contrast to be in the foreground area. This is just an indication of the, the branch in the background, which I'll go in with mid-tone values later when we get into color. Just hit this with a darker tone to indicate the light shadow under the branch moving out. Okay, the branch is, there's light along this branch and it's dappled. The wonderful little hole in the tree right here. Indication. And there again, we move up, this wraps around, Have some more interesting hole shapes. And then we have off of that some dappled light coming in and around this branch. So some, some of these areas are in light, some are in shadow. We want to make sure we join all our shadow shapes. So we have a nice strong shadow here. This area of the branch gets wider. Make sure your branches continue off the page. And I'll go into the light is hitting the edge of the tree here. All this is in shadow, but it's more of a mid-tone. It's not as dark as some of the shadow areas. So we are going to keep that, to keep those mid-tone ranges a little bit softer and keep our, where the sun is hitting the tree, and allow that to stay white. Here again, we're going into a dappled area of sunlight. So I don't want to get in there and get too... I'm going to leave that light in there. And the shadows come up around. You can soften some of your shadow edges with the edge of your brush. It's a variety of brushes to use for that. Okay. I'm pleased with the, how this is working. Um, in the background, we do have an indication very lightly of some leaves back there. Let's put in some light textures, which will soften later. 
with paint, remember you apply and then push it around or wipe it. So we do have some things going on in the background. And I think I want to resolve a little bit more of this twist here, this block in. So with your block in stage, you're you're just refining, making your refining the drawing really and deciding on your shadows. How are those going to work? You can make some shadow areas darker, but you're, this is your roadmap. You're creating your roadmap for what you'd like to see happen later. So get make dark what needs to be dark. It's a really strong dark area of the branch. Those dark shadows really bring the tree to life. And this is a little thinner. I'm going to wipe out some of this branch so as not to get too thick. There we go. So at this point, you're just working on getting that shadow pattern in there. This is a favorite tree of a lot of people who walk on along the Danza Trail. This is what, like I said, a historic trail that connects Nogales, Arizona with San Francisco. And we are located, um, this is San Juan Batista. And so lots of locals now out taking hikes in the middle of the day. Now that we're sheltering in, a lot more people on the trail during the day, a lot of people working from home, which is nice, able to get out to this beautiful trail. Okay, I have a lot of sunlight Hello. down on this lower branch here, so I don't want to get too much mid-tone in there. Little shadow coming up over. Okay. And for some of these leaf shapes back here, I could just wipe them out. Keep keeping it soft. Just keeping this area soft. Let me keep that light from the background. Okay, one area I'm going to make darker is this area of the tree here. Really nice shadow shape here. As you work your shadows in there, keep in mind you're looking at shapes. And you don't want to lose some of your more powerful, impactful shadows. So you might have to go in and restate when you start moving into mid-tone. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to go in and restate some of my darker shadows that were really working with this tree to give it that third dimension. I notice with a block in, if you do you can either do a two value block in or a three value. I prefer the three value because it really helps to set up the value pattern on that drawing. Being mindful, what am I going to keep really dark and what will I keep in mid-tone? Okay, one last check. Checking my values can resolve this tree. This is a lot of mid-tone here and it softens up. I might get a little shadow in here. I don't want to lose what's going on. There's some nice textural things happening off at this part of the tree. This is where there's been a 
little animal hole there. We don't want to lose that really nice texture. And then restating the shadow under it. Okay, there we are for the blocking. Okay, so I spent the last 10 minutes mixing a variety of colors for the background. Uh, I'll be using an angled brush, a flat brush, a number five Rosemary Company flat brush, uh, some angled brushes, and a number two Rosemary flat brush. And I'm going to go into the background now. I'm going to start placing some values in the background after my block. And I'm, I'm pretty pleased with what I have going on with, uh, with the shadow pattern. And so I'll just go in and start to maybe put in some abstract shapes. Got a little bit too much medium on that brush there. You just wipe it off with your paper towel. Lots going on in the background. A lot of wonderful different uh, values, warm and cool greens. I'm just going to put in some brushwork. Just abstract shapes. I want to keep the background simple. I'm paying attention to edges when I come up to a particular edge of a tree. Where do I want the lighter colors? Start to move up. This makes a really nice, this deeper green makes a nice color for leaves in the background. Once again, I'm not drawing leaves individually. I'm just going to put in abstract shapes to give the sense that there's leaves in the background because I want to maintain my focus on the foreground. So right now I'm just abstracting the background, looking at the leaves as abstracted shapes. Looking at all my shapes, negative and positive shapes, with the goal of creating dynamic shapes. Here's my darkest green of some dark values in here that are in shadow. So you could see the three different shades of green that I'll use for my background. And the 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 way I developed these values was a mixture of sap green, cad lemon yellow, uh, my mixture of burnt umber and sap green helped to tone down the saturation of these colors. And white, titanium white. So as I look at, it's a nice deep green right in here between these two limbs. So it's all going to be just a movement of value and shape. So you know there's leaves back there. Try to keep those shapes organic. clusters of leaves. As we move toward the top of the tree, the canopy is, there's more shadow. So there's a lot more thicker leaf patterns within the top of the tree. So you could see the movement from dark to light. Once again, I'm working from plein air painting outdoors which makes a really big difference. Uh, I can see these color variations since I am on location right now at the scene. If I were to photograph this, I wouldn't 
I may not see these variations unless I zoomed way in on the photo. And then it would be either very blue or highly saturated. Just looking at that, how are those leaves moving? You can move your, your brushwork according to the movement of the leaves. So once again, I'm looking at what's going on in this space right here. I have a dark leaf coming up from under here. A branch. Could be one coming over on this side. And some nice darks. Now I'll work back into my light area. When I change colors, I'm wiping the brush off. Make sure you wipe your brush off. The sun is moving in and out. Some nice new gold, bright lemon yellow with white gold colors that will really help to make some of these edges pop. Now there's a branch moving up abstractly in the background here. So I've mixed up a gray color. And I'll see how that works. Down in the background here we have just an indication of a tree. It's moving off. I do not want to draw attention to it, so I'll add some white in there. I do want it to stay to the background. It's just an indication that there are some tree shapes in the background that move off. Once again, keeping it light and toned down, I do not want to draw attention to the background, I want to keep it pretty abstract. Um, seeing a little bit of yellow ochre with it to tone it down a bit. Send it to the background. So we want the sense that there are tree, tree branches in the background without competing with the foreground. Now that I've put a lot of nice light uh, sun areas in the background, along with some nice shadow values in the canopy, I'm going to start to work on the foreground. Now the sun is draping across this uh, buckeye tree very beautifully. So I may just start by putting in some of those those nice warm values where the sun is hitting just to indicate some of that, that light area, starting with the transition. Lighter side of the tree where the sun hits, I'm putting in some lemon yellow, white, 
and yellow ochre. So we'll keep our eye out for the sun is dipping in and out of the clouds. We do have a nice, we already have a really nice uh, shadow block in. So I will use the, a darker shadow color for our block in. But I just wanted to get some of these warm tones in as the sun is moving very quickly. I want to catch the light side of the tree where the sun hits. For larger shapes, I'm using a rosemary flat brush, size five. Bring in some more yellow ochre in here. This yellow ochre makes for a nice transitional value between the shadow side and the sun-drenched side. In mind we have a nice dapple effect with that sun. So keep your strokes soft. Dip in and then pull away. And then I may go into using for some of the smaller areas the number two rosemary flat brush. Depending on your style you can also try the rounds. The rounds work well. I do have some gray values in the tree. So I may pull in some light grays. Here again, we're bouncing between the warms and the cools. We're staying within the light values, but bringing some variety in. But the Buckeye has a nice variety of, of bark. There's some gray and browns. Again, I'm going in, just working on those transitional values, those mid-tone values. I'm working on a tonal mid-tone range. Now this limb is behind the front limb. 
So I do want it to fall back. Once again, going between warm and cool. My grays and my my warm grays and my cool grays work particularly well for this buckeye tree. I thought I'd put in a little dark value just to test. Always checking on my value range. Want to maintain the variety in value, but also the shapes. I don't want to lose my value pattern. So sometimes it's just a movement between your lighter values and your darker values. Helps to maintain the texture of the tree. The sun has gone behind the clouds, so I'm going to take advantage and get in there and really be able to look at what are some of these colors. Since I don't have bright sun on the tree right now, I can get in and really look at the colors since I don't have a really dark shadow in there. So I can move and check out what is the color of that bark. to continue to take advantage of looking at the colors that are in the shadow areas. And I will jump between warms and cools as I go up the bark. My cool mixes are made with the Prussian blue and sap mixture of Prussian blue, sap green with the burnt umber. And then my warmer mixes have the yellow ochre and sap green and burnt umber. beautiful bark on this buckeye tree. Once you start working on the actual bark to the tree, it becomes a wonderful experiment with tones and values. That's what makes trees just so beautiful. It's really just working with the bark. Here again, it gets a little bit lighter up around this opening here. As the branches branch off, so right here, there's a delicate balance between the light side and the dark side of the tree. You do not want to lose your value pattern. So we always want to maintain that our block in. Our block in is a wonderful indication of what are you going to keep dark? Keep your darks in the dark area and your lights in the light area. Set your palette up. 
with your darks on one side and your lights on the other side. I may go in and if I decide to lighten up my darks, I would do it then with some of the yellow ochre that would warm it, but still keep it in the dark range. That's what I'm doing on this side of the tree. Maintaining the, the just jumping between warm and cool bark colors along the shadow side of the tree. And it's okay to get a little bit lighter as you head into the neutral, that transitional range between the dark and the light. You don't want to lose your dark side of the tree. It's also to keep some of your colors thin. So this branch branches off, cuts over. Here again, this branch is in shadow in the background, so I don't want to lose it. I'm allowing it to fall to the background with these very neutral colors. Uh, the sun's coming out, so I get a better sense of light and shadow. I won't make this branch too dark back here. I want to keep it neutral, which allows our branches in the foreground to come forward. Always paying attention to what do you want in the foreground and what do you want in the background. So this branch is in the foreground. We've got our sun out. Now I have a more distinct light shadow area play upon the tree. Shadow is dark and comes down along the tree here. And my sun has changed on me. So be careful when you have that sun changing. You'll be chasing the light. Now with the sun out, I'm catching some really nice warm tones in the bark. So don't make sure I catch it before the sun disappears. Always move your brush in the direction that the tree bark is moving to give it that round. We know you're working on your bark is round. Lots of nice dappling going on in here. Keep in mind your lights are only as light as your darks are dark. So as you see, as I bring some of these nice light areas in, I need to counter the light 
with some nice shadow areas. A wonderful twist of the tree branch here. dark shadow side will help in the, the dappled light there he is where you have dappled light working those deeper colors up bring in some warmth up here and we have this wonderful limb comes down gracefully cuts into the tree more dappling of light as this limb bends down into the tree catch some of the light right here It's coming from hitting this back side of the limb. Pull in to allow for this highlight to work well. I'm going to pull in some softer neutral shadows. Them to just come blend in and go down the tree here. Once again, more dappled light. So with that dappled light, and allow these shadows to soften on the front part of the tree here. Another great way to get texture along your bark. Just how is that? shadow moving down the tree. So we're keeping our shadows transparent. Moving into a light Color. Have some gray shadows coming up along. There we go. Have the lighter area of the tree. A shadow coming up and around this large branch. Okay, the sun has changed a bit, so I'm going to get in and try to get those shadow areas taken care of. Make sure we don't lose our value statement. You may have to go in and restate your shadows. Always working your drawing off to the edges where you need to go off to the edges. Okay. 
adding variety where you need to. The goal is to keep the tree holding together. So I'll go in and just move between the lights and the darks. I added just a little bit of light. There's a little sun hitting that outer edge of the tree. You don't have uh, to fill everything in, so just follow along your drawing, your initial block in. Decide where you need value and where can you leave that transparency shine, shining through. And where do you need to restate? I'm just going in, checking on what needs to be restated. In terms of the shadow area and what's fine to leave where it is. We, we want to make sure that this trunk is connected so I'll go in with some mid-tones. The light is dappled in here but I don't want to lose the sense that this limb is coming out of the same tree. So I've got the sunlight in here and I have to be careful with how I connect those with the shadow the way it's coming in. I don't want to get too dark. I don't want to lose the nice shapes I have going on there. I do want this all to work together. So I'll start with neutral. Bring in a neutral color. The yellow ochre. That yellow ochre is doing a good job of holding this tree together in my neutral areas. I do like how some of the underpainting, the blocking is showing through here. And then you can go in. There's some really nice marks, but you could decide where do you want to soften to join things together. I've got a nice You can soften some edges and leave some rough. That will help bring that area of the tree together. Here, once again, I want to join this lower part of the tree. So I'll bring some darks in here. This part of the tree, there's a nice shadow that dapples around that helps to hold this together here. The darker shadow comes up underneath and then goes out of the scene. I'm going to bring in some neutral shadows in here and allow these to go up into the light area where the sun is hitting. There again, blending your neutrals. A little more darks up here. So it would be a good area to bring in that yellow ochre just to help hold some of this together. Almost like a nice binding agent for trees is that yellow ochre brings that warm wood together. And so I've got some nice, really nice contrast here. Nice shadow, really beautiful shadow under the limb. This limb comes out, 
goes up off of the painting. Now I have to resolve this wonderful twisting branch that comes in. So it wraps around, it comes down. And then we have a shadow side. So resolving this part of this branch that comes towards you that has this wonderful shadow side before it joins and branches off. It's light hitting this part too. So this, I, I guess as we're going into uh, watching little parts of this drawing, it's definitely, we're at the refinement stage. I want to go up, leave this alone. Sometimes if you leave something alone, it will resolve itself by just going up and addressing what's around it. So I'll leave this and I'll start working on this area of the painting. Resolve what's going on here. Lots of lights and shadows. So, here we have another break in the branch. So I have some neutrals, tones. We're going to allow to hold this together. Hold this break in the tree. Moving up toward the sun, I can get a little warmer. That area is still in shadow. So I'll pull some of these darker tones. Nice edge and bump on the tree here it's, as it gnarls. Just by pushing and pulling on the brush, you can get some really nice shapes. If it gets too thick, I'll go in with a light tone. It's light hitting right about here. Here again, we've got some nice shadows. Now I'm going to put, bring in some of that sunlight. That's hitting the tree right about here. See the sun hitting the branch. And then that continues off and out off the top of the drawing. So I'll allow that branch to go out. Holding that branch to the tree with my neutrals. More neutrals up along this top part of the tree. And some neutrals up along this part. And you keep going back and forth until your tree moves off of, in and out of your drawing, the painting area. Okay, it's time to finish up with some nice, deep, 
greens in the foreground indicating the brush along the path. So I'm along a path here. I just go in and get some, bring up some of these deep greens. Always keeping in mind, keeping the eye moving. So move your brush in the direction that you want to keep that movement going. So in, in the foreground along the path, I have a combination of deep greens, where I'm using my sap green, and also some saturated gold, golden greens, lime green. When there's a variety of brush, you could bring in some yellow ochre to get closer to the path area, warm that up. And we have a nice warm path here, so I'll bring in some right where the tree is. Path comes along some bright greens that go up into the tree area. And then there's a warm path. Lots of people standing on the edge. It's, like I said, this is a favorite tree along the path. So many go right up to that edge. Let's take a look at the tree. So allow that path to just come off towards us. And then of course that path is surrounded by additional grasses that haven't been stepped on yet. We'll go down into the path to the tree. I'll bring some deep greens. off. Always keep in mind what type of movement do you want going on with your shadows, your shadow shapes. I'll put a nice deeper shadow in this area where the sun is not hitting. And bring in some warmer tones, lighter tones in here. Keeping in mind that we're still on this path. in some areas where there's leaves. And still some of our light green. Restating this edge here refinement stage, you can go in and start to just restate edges, the difference between your lights and your darks. It's really these lights and darks that will really make your 
compositions really stand out. Go in and restate this shadow right here. It just helps the movement of the tree. It's just refinement. Make sure we can see what's going on here. This limb goes around, comes out, it's down. Just refining. These limbs fall to the back. I don't want them to stand out too much. So give them a neutral color. Allow them to fall off to the background. And shadow. dark values up in the canopy and just in a couple areas to add some variety in the background some shadow shapes in here deeper colors for our leaves a little bit more up in here for the canopy of the tree. 